Greetings everyone, this is Code Equestria by way of Code Cafe. As I promised, here is my results and opinion show. Now, now, if you're wondering, I spend, I spend my, I spend my Tuesday nights Hanging out with the Raw Down podcast. You can often catch me in the chat responding to their many, many questions. And because Elimination Chamber was an event, they had their typical predictions segment. In that prediction segment, I put in the chat, in exact order nearly, Every wrestler that would win in the Elimination Chamber card. How right was I? I was perfect. That's right. Not one miss. Not one missed prediction. Perfect. Flawless. Eight for eight. And that's me including the kickoff show. So, I should be the Raw Down champion. But how did this night go? Well, this night went as my predictions did. Perfectly. Everyone that was supposed to win, did. All the matches were high quality. As much as you can get in modern day WWE. Sure, the results were not surprising. Cody Rhodes did not show up, and there weren't any shockers. But, it doesn't matter when, when the wrestling and athletic talent is good. When WWE sees the Saudi people, they never let them down in terms of wrestling quality. And this event was no different. After the kickoff show, which had Rey Mysterio beat The Miz, naturally, the event started out with Goldberg and Roman Reigns. In a matter of six minutes, Goldberg was forced to pass out due to the guillotine, thus setting up the first part of my dream. The second part would come later. After that pass out, it was time for the Women's Elimination Chamber, which had great wrestling in it, and, and continued some rivalries. Alexa Bliss, being the wild card in this match, really had a great display for her first match coming back in about nine months. Showing, showing off all the skills required and even pinning Liv Morgan. To many chagrin. Bianca Belair won the match and will challenge and defeat Becky Lynch at, at WrestleMania 38 in 42 days. Yes, I'm spoiling some of my predictions here. I'll give you the full list when we get close to WrestleMania. But I'm just telling you right now. Bianca Belair, your new Raw Women's Champion. You just have to wait 42 days to get there. And she showed every fiber of why they keep putting her in these positions. She's athletic. She's charismatic. She can practically work with just about anyone. She's a keeper. If there's anybody... Outside of the big four, 
that would be Becca, Becky, Charlotte, Bailey, and, and of course, Sasha. Bianca's clearly becoming the fifth in that illustrious group. You might as well say Ronda Rousey, for as long as she wants to be, can be number six. Because she, with help from Naomi, won a tag team match with one hand tied behind her back, beating Charlotte and Sonya Deville. Of course, this will lead to Sonya Deville's ultimate firing as a, as a general manager of sorts, and her downward spiral and ultimate second loss to Naomi so that we can get rid of the atypical we're not racist storyline in WWE for the year. Yeah, can we just please end that like right now, right now? Because it's a real pain in the neck. After that, Drew McIntyre swung a sword at Happy Corbin. Won his match against Madcap Moss, which was pretty much a glorified handicap match throughout with just Drew being Drew and overpowering the odds and winning the match for the single claymore. It's just too bad that they're, they're not going to have anything to do do for Mr. Drew McIntyre. Just that it's going to be a thing. Dang, that Happy Corbin's going to probably take his first loss on TV since the gimmick change to Drew in a night one match at Mania. It's really sad, though. I wish it were for something more, like an Intercontinental title, perhaps? That would spice things up. The Usos and Viking Raiders didn't even have a match, but I'm going to give it to the Usos anyway. Because even if they did have a match, the Usos probably would have won it. But this allows the Usos to probably lose night one, to lose the title of night one while Roman still wins. Or set up the match for Friday Night Smackdown this upcoming week, in which the Usos will still win. It's rather uneventful. Mm, much like at the basis this whole event was. Lita took on Becky, Becky won, but if this is going to be the Farewell match for Lita. She wrestled her best match. Period. She broke out some new new moves. She brought back the old classics. And she looked like she could hang with Becky for the entirety of the match. And yes, even Becky tried to cheat and win, but it wasn't enough. With with a very good and very well executed near fall. But thanks to a manhandle slam with the last of her strength, Becky was able to pick up the dub. Thus, setting up the match I mentioned earlier. But of course, we all know why we came here. Will Brock Lesnar set up my dream? Set up the match that should have happened years ago. The title unification. And yes, indeed it has happened. Brock Lesnar is once again the holder of the greatest championship in all of sports. Something that is becoming very frequent. Title reign? Number 10, Lesnar, entering the chat early, destroys the Elimination Chamber and wins the championship. The more compelling story here is that due to a 
Taco Bomb style spot that tore the plexiglass, Bobby Lashley was given a concussion. Thus taking him out of the match, allowing Lesnar to win. Austin Fury, unfortunately, was a happy and willing victim. Victim to Lesnar's beastie onslaught. But indeed, the match is set. Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, at least now, for the Universal title only, but expect it to be one man, two men walk out, one man leaves before, before we get to April 3rd. When we get to April 3rd, Roman Reigns will have had the Universal title for close to 620 days. And the reign will continue forward. Expect him to unify the titles at Mania in their most brutal but most anticipated match. This is the best match to main event the end of WrestleMania. Let's take emotions out of it and look at it in the raw. This is the okay, best situation. Okay, Sammy, that's Especially if it leads a, leads a title unification and ultimately, maybe for just a little bit, the end of the notion of this brand split. That's what I would want most out of this. Elimination Chamber was predictable. But predictable doesn't instantly mean bad. Yes, is it slightly disappointing that there were no twists, no big reveals, just straightforward what we expected? Yes. But it set up the best possible matches for a WrestleMania going forward, and maybe a storyline or two to leaning into undercards. Elimination Chamber served its purpose and had great wrestling for something so early in the morning. If I would have to rate it, it would be a 7 out of 10, but with a 7 out of 10 that serves its purpose, I am most certainly looking forward to my second birthday starting April 2nd. Because there are going to be title switches all over the place. No championship will be safe going out of WrestleMania and expect new champions all over the place. When next we get together for Code K, Faye, Faye, I've got two videos planned. One, how NXT 2.0 should move forward, giving you a year's worth, worth of planning in a single video. And, of course, the Nirvana's Fantasy Booking. I have had the pen going into WrestleMania 38. Could make any match I pleased. How would I book it? It was a popular video last year, so I'm doing it again. We are on the road to WrestleMania, and yes, some of that road may have already been paved in gold. But it doesn't mean there won't be speed bumps. Until next time, believe in the fantasy of wrestling, and only the fantasy. And find peace in your own nirvana. I'll see you next time.